they blow up the scene with a Shakespearean flair. Right, right now, I feel really good. You're like some kind of antidote, mixes with the liquor and keeps me in balance. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 dramatic performances by action stars. Did you lose your other wives this way? I think so. But you'd have to ask them. For this list, we're focusing on deeply moving performances from actors and actresses who are typically associated with action films, or at least are known for portraying iconic action characters or heroes. I guess you do kind of blend in, huh? <laughs> Did I scowl at you? Number 10, Bruce Willis, The Sixth Sense. Wanna play a game? It's a mind reading game. By the end of the 20th century, this tough guy actor had established himself as a bankable action star. So most fans were a little shocked to see Bruce Willis starring in some psychological drama directed by, I don't know, some guy named M. Night Shyamalan. You think so? What happened? Well, you know what happened. Bruce killed it. I think I'm okay, really. I think it just went. What is it and with all due respect to Haley Joel Osment, I see dead people. The Sixth Sense would have been a much different film if it weren't for the contained sadness exhibited by Willis. You think I'm sad? Incidentally, Willis's performance made Wes Anderson's ears perk when casting his 2012 classic, Moonrise Kingdom. What's your rush? You got your whole life in front of yourself. Number nine, Tom Hardy, Locke. Yes, I'll, ex I'll explain when I'm not driving and when I'm with you and Eddie together, you know? Okay, so how's this for a plot hook? A man drives around for 84 minutes while having 36 phone conversations. <laughs> no? Okay, well, what if we threw Mad Max in there? Oh, uh, yeah. You know, hope is a mistake. In Stephen Knight's subdued character study, life itself is conveyed through Hardy's first-rate performance, and his blue-collar character comes to grips with father issues, an affair, a work disaster, and a possible divorce. When I left the site just over two hours ago, I had a job, a wife, a home, and now I have none of those things. Hardy effectively locked viewers in, allowing us to ride shotgun and experience his plight in real time. She's very emotional. Well, she isn't used to being emotional, I think. I think she's normally a very quiet person. Not all tough guys can sell such a role, but then again, Hardy is an actor, and a damn good one. Right, that's it. Go on, good night. Number eight, Hugh Jackman, Les Miserables. My name is Jean Valjean. He loves slicing up dudes as Wolverine from the X-Men franchise, but he also loves fabulous period films. To love another person is to see the face of God. So just imagine the faces of stunned fanboys everywhere when they watched the 58-minute epic romantic musical that was Tom Hooper's Les Miserables. Is it true what I've done? <laughs> My daughter's close to dying. To an innocent soul. It's not that Hugh Jackman was any less manly in it. It's just that some action buffs didn't realize he was a man of many talents, capable of stepping into Jean Valjean's shoes and balancing the art of show tunes with ass kicking. I am warning you, Jackman, and the price you have to pay. Jackman continues to keep fans on their toes alongside with him. Look down, look down. Don't Number seven, Angelina Jolie, Girl Interrupted. Good to know. She's the 21st century's first lady of action films. Sorry. If you're a diehard Angelina fan, though, you know she was already handling her business throughout the 90s. Packers, Gia, The Bone Collector. I would say that you're putting your career at serious risk. Well, you think because of your condition you have the right to push people around? I'm sorry, that is truly pathetic. Then came her last film of the decade, in which she portrayed the engaging, sexy, and psychotic Lisa in James Mangold's Girl Interrupted. I'm free! You don't know what freedom is! I'm free! I can breathe! And you, you're gonna go choke on your average mediocre life! At this moment in history, Winona Ryder represented all the sweet darlings of Hollywood. And so, Angelina Jolie capitalized on every small detail of her character to set herself apart. Lara Croft wasn't born in England, she was born in a psych ward. Lady, back off. Number six, Robert Downey Jr., Chaplin. If you want to understand me, watch my movies. It takes a complicated actor to portray one of cinema's most complicated stars. I said, I love this country. I own everything. 
That's precisely why I can criticize. Then again, Robert Downey Jr. is just a man, and Charlie Chaplin was far more than just a comical figure. Jesus Christ, I got it! Time, space, matter, energy! While Downey Jr. had previously starred on Saturday Night Live, today he's known for his Iron Man persona. Hey! In the early 90s, not only did he beat out iconic comedians such as Jim Carrey, Robin Williams, and Peter Sellers for the role, but he also managed to honor the legacy of Charlie Chaplin by producing an honest portrayal, even if director Richard Attenborough flashed his creative license here and there. Nothing quite like it. Feeling a film. Number five, Scarlett Johansson, Lost in Translation. I hope your Porsche works out. Cheers to that. In one of her first Golden Globe-nominated performances, the future Black Widow starred opposite a legend of cinema, Bill Murray, while taking direction from Hollywood royalty, Sofia Coppola. I don't want to leave. So don't stay here with me. We'll start a jazz band. At only 18 years of age, Scarlett Johansson proved capable of holding her own while showcasing the charm and grace that would make her a defining sex symbol of the decade. Gonna use my arms. Gonna use my legs. Gonna use my style. Gonna use my style. With the always relevant Murray selling the concept of being lost in translation, it was Scarlett that hypnotized viewers with her timeless screen presence and natural charisma. You really are having a midlife crisis, huh? Number four, Christian Bale, the fighter. Who used to be the pride of low, huh? Right here. With Mark Wahlberg serving as the calm center of David O. Russell's Mickey Ward biopic, Christian Bale managed to combine heartbreak and comedy without going over the edge. He's a great guy. He's a great fighter. He can't go wrong. Thanks for the drink. As the half-brother of the film's real-life subject, the actor stepped away from the stoicism of his Dark Knight character and produced a fragile man facing his own battle with personal demons. Hey, trust me, all right? Done. As a result, Bale essentially produced a film within a film, a meta-commentary on the perils of mixing family loyalty and drug addiction. You were my hero. I was. I was. Number three, Jennifer Lawrence, Silver Linings Playbook. I opened up to you and you judged me, you're an asshole. In a follow-up to The Fighter, David O. Russell directed another film about family dysfunction, but with a heightened sense of comedy while also tackling depression and bipolar disorder. How old are you? Old enough to have a marriage and to not wind up in a mental hospital. Winning the Academy Award for Best Actress, Jennifer Lawrence renewed the life of her supporting characters, but not because Tiffany Maxwell was necessarily balanced herself or committed to a cause like Katniss Everdeen. I'm just the crazy slut with a dead husband! <laughs> nope, she was just trying to get by like everybody else. And the interactions with Pat Solitano unveiled the beauty of recognizing one's personal flaws while understanding the perspective of others. I mean, humanity is just nasty, and there's no silver lining. Much like in Winter's Bone, Lawrence brought a sense of truth to her role. Do you feel that? That's emotion. Number two, Tom Cruise, born on the 4th of July. People say, people say, if you don't love America, then get the hell out. Well, I love America. Based on the real-life experiences of Vietnam veteran Ron Kovic, who co-wrote the film with director Oliver Stone, also a Vietnam vet, born on the 4th of July, floored audiences thanks to the lived-in performance of one Tom Cruise. Yes, that's Top Gun's Pete Maverick Mitchell. I feel the need, the need for speed. Ow! But this was no cookie-cutter wink of the eye role for Cruz, as he was tasked with not only making Kovic proud, but also representing the experiences of so many veterans upon returning home from war. We love the people of America very much, but when it comes to the government, it stops right there. The government is a bunch of corrupt thieves, they are rapists and robbers, and we are here to say that we don't have to take it anymore. And, well, he got the job done. Ten years later, Cruz once again proved his versatility in Paul Thomas Anderson's Magnolia. What am I doing? Yeah. I'm quietly judging you. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Did you tell him we call him Cupid? No. That's our joke. I had a chat with young Alice. Fancier. Of course. Is it too much for you to come over and just say hi to him? I'll take fun. Excuse me? You know who that is? It's John DuPont. I guess that must have alarmed you, turning up like that. If you that. touch me, I'll more than alarm you. That won't be necessary. Your report, very detailed. Just for me, it wasn't very entertaining. Ça, ça c'est moi, aujourd'hui. Avant, j'étais maigre, petit, 
chez Tiff. Et j'ai commencé le karaté, donc le dojo, le respect. On croit les gens quand ils vous disent « Oh, You don't have to sleep at the station if you don't want to. You can stay in my basement until you find a new place. Hey. Don't ever let somebody tell you you can't do something. Not even me. Number one, Liam Neeson, Schindler's List. How many cigarettes have you smoked tonight? Too many. As human beings, we are all flawed individuals. Steven Spielberg's sobering Schindler's List reminded us that redemption can be achieved through goodwill and genuine respect for others. Power is when we have every justification to kill, and we don't. Playing the purveyor of decency, Liam Neeson channeled the spirit of Oscar Schindler, a German who saved hundreds upon hundreds of Polish Jews and forever altered their perception of a deeply traumatic experience. I could have got more up. I could have got more. At the time, Neeson was most known for his role as Darkman, and he would go on to take the lead in the Taken franchise. But in 1993, he served as the face of the human spirit and what can be accomplished through patience, positivity, and respect. You're protected by powerful friends. You should know that. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite dramatic performance by an action star? Are you serious? Oh, I think you know I'm serious. For more mind-blowing top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Forgive me. <laughs>